this. Interesting. Come out the fun. over here. I think we're quiet before the. the, yeah, the calm let's get going. The storm. Uh, we yeah, are quiet before the. Yeah, the let's get going. The storm. Uh, we yeah, are quiet before the. Yeah. Hello and welcome, yeah. yeah. welcome to Let's Talk. We are quiet. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. 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 Hello and so what was the question? I'm sorry. You know what happened? No. I had I had our I had our our Twitch and our YouTube. The volume was on at the same time, so I heard like echoes and echoes. It sounded amazing. But honestly, I wish I could have that um, enhancement during our live gameplay. But um, what was your? Question? Oh, we can figure what? that out. Oh, we oh so can. when what what do you define as travel? Because I know you. You, you've recently said in one of our chats that we've been traveling the pretty much the entire game and haven't really stopped for a dungeon. Yeah, so the topic of travel is interesting because, like, I, you know me, I, I researched the, the topics before this, and I, I just look, look at the top, you know, uh, feeds that I have <laughs> and see what people have commented on. And a lot of them say that, like, traveling is boring, and traveling mm -hmm. is not adventurous for them or engaging. It's mm -hmm. funny for me because our three-year campaign, which we play every other Monday, uh, mm -hmm. that's a little plug, um, but we, we play every other Monday. I feel like the amount of traveling that we've done exceeds all, all of the rest of it, and it's been awesome. So I, I, didn't, I don't think I know exactly like how i wouldn't say like i know how to travel i just know that um the way in which i do it and i i feel like we've been tra so how do i explain this dungeon crawling uh the, what i guess what i was saying in the pre-chat was dungeon crawling um and dungeons and dragons you, you'd imagine yourself you're in this confined space you're going through a map that you have made as the dm mm -hmm. um it's not limiting to the players when you're when you're in the dungeon, but it is a little bit limiting to the DM uh, because you've already you've you mapped this out and it's a confining world. But I, I think the way you do travel, and I hope we can articulate it and dissect it a little bit. And my, that's my goal of this um, this podcast is to is to talk about how traveling is. I think to me, like one of the one of the better qualities of of the game, um, mm -hmm. when you when you have a map that has nothing on it, I mean, you can sort of confine the the map. You, let's just say you have a piece of paper. You're you're traveling. I mean, yeah. Well, and, here let me yeah. Let, let let me scope that question yeah because travel means a lot and you see the whole world air conditioner turn that off the whole world and exploring the world to you seems like travel because you are traveling you're moving about and also chris's random tangent for the the evening don't <laughs> limit yourself in dungeons secret doors are so amazing as a player to find throw them in if you want to add something else and you're like we're gonna secret secret door right here to a secret tunnel but with this random other thing i want to put in there all right tangent done um <laughs> a lot of people in my opinion or the way i view travel it's like you're going from place to place like i'm in this town i want to go over to this other town or we're at this castle and we're going to go back to the fort um Anything you're doing, even you're just like moving through a map, moving through a city, it's what is your goal in this? I guess it's essentially a, a, an encounter. Your travel is, in, is an encounter. It's like, what is your goal? Is it just to get from point A to point B as fast as you can? Or is it 
you have a lot of lore or information that you want to try and impart into your players? Or have you been in a city for a really long time and your players just want to kill a bunch of shit and use all the cool fighting abilities without being terrified that if they punch a guy that they're going to go to jail? It's depending on the goal that you have, travel can branch off many directions. Right. And, in, you know, like, one, of the, one of the things that um, that I was reading about um, and, I, and I looked up some of the top the top uh, uh, situations or, or issues that people have when they when they dungeon master and when they play dungeon mm -hmm. games for for traveling is that there aren't really that many rules. That's one of the probably mm -hmm. one of the main one of the main things. And we'll we'll hopefully circle back to that because. Again, yeah. you can make your own rules, and that's what I suggest. But, um, the, you know, the, it gets bogged down by people trying to make traveling interesting with random encounters. And mm -hmm. then the players sometimes, you know, I, I've, I've done this, where you guys travel and you travel and you travel, and I'm like, oh, my God, another one of these, like, random roles. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. let's throw a different, a different uh, character or, or NPC in there. And then the characters get too focused on that npc and i'm like no mm -hmm. i i just wanted to make it interesting stay on yeah stay on track you know and so then 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 it gets weird when um you're trying to make that interesting and it's not supposed to be interesting but it is interesting and so on and so forth um, but what you're describing is the same skill set that you as a dungeon master use in every single session you play it's the pacing of the game and Part as a dungeon master, it's under like somewhat of a reading how your players are engaging and what they're wanting, sort of anticipating like the that need, that desire. And even sometimes it's a communication with them of like, what is your what what are what is your intent here? Are you right. wanting to just go and travel and do you want to do a couple random encounters? Or are we just trying to get here fast? Right. And say maybe we do. If we just want to get here fast, all right, let's do a couple survival rolls or um, some other roll to keep your way on the road or something. To, let's just do a couple rolls to see how long it takes you, and we'll just be in the next city. Or it's like, do we want to do some encounters? Sure, okay, we might run into a random NPC that drops a whole bunch of lore. Or you're camping out for the evening, and someone sees some old ruin to an old lost city. Right. There's plenty it, of options to, there's to a add lot stuff in. Of, there's a lot of options to make um, the traveling interesting. The issue but is I'll, yeah. there are it's, too it's, many. I think there are too many. And sometimes you need to, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in a dungeon, you're in a confined spot, and you're, you're traveling down, there's a trap. You're traveling down, there's right. a small encounter. There's a bigger room, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a medium monster, there's a puzzle, there's a trap or whatever. Um, it's, it's confined in that space. And so what I was talking about earlier with the open world effect of traveling is that it can be overwhelming uh, as a dungeon master, but also as a player, because the way that I like to run the game, um, I like to rely on my players sometimes for descriptions. I'm getting better with that. Um, mm -hmm. And if, if you're in an open world, like, you know, you need to, as a DM, you need to sort of develop that, that world. So with with traveling, um, and I didn't really realize this, uh, and I guess I'm getting a little a little ahead of my of what I wanted to. I'm getting I'm skipping a couple chapters in this in this mm -hmm. podcast because this is such an interesting uh, mm -hmm. uh, topic. When I didn't realize this, but like all all of our sessions for the most, for the most part, with exception, of, I don't know, we've, we've had we've had almost seventy sessions. I would say that like almost. 20 of them have been in dungeons. The rest have actually been, if you think about it, have actually been traveling. And the way that I think that traveling should function um, to make it interesting is to treat the environment like a dungeon. That will, you, that's that exactly what I was you, thinking of. That will the Artemisian you, Forest. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, the Artemisian Forest, you built it as a dungeon. Mm -hmm. But at playing it, it felt like a, a a a travel excursion of like we're cruising through this place, and it felt expansive. It felt open to a point. 
the but the yeah the, we did we did it we did it multiple times we did the desert yeah and the open, and you can the open water the open water the open water yeah. was insane it was insane all that is is traveling when you're on a ship yeah. and you're going from a to b uh my our our uh heroes are trying to find uh, an old relic essentially is what the, what the story is and they're on open water they're traveling but you can't just mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a cheap it's too cheap for me to say okay uh let's roll okay well there's no encounter now you've traveled to uh you know 100 miles to this random island no there's got to be more well, and it could be it you, could be you know a, a random encounter or whatever but there's many different uh, options and ways to, to do that. And I have a one that I started using in my last uh, game I DM'd. And the DM who took over afterwards loved it. And he started using it in our game afterward, after that. Um, but there's... You're... Building it, building your travel as a, essentially like a dungeon of like a series of encounters. It right. doesn't have to feel as a dungeon master. It doesn't have to feel as uh, open and expansive as it looks on a map. You see, you see a map and you see a dot, and you're like, oh no, they can go anywhere. But you're like, you you as the dungeon master, you know generally where they're going to go. Are they going to go into the woods and want to explore into the woods? You, you probably know if they're going to want to do that or stay on the road and go to the town. But it's, it goes back to the understanding what the purpose of that travel is. Right. So if you know what your goal is, is our goal just to get here to there as fast as possible, then I can plan the series of encounters that is the travel. And it could be 10 minutes of in-game time and we get there and then we move on to the story. Or is it, you're going to go on a pretty challenging road. So there is there's a high probability you might be attacked by bandits or other wild animals, or are you going to be going into the woods? You can be traveling through the woods, but it's going to be a slog. And if you're, if it's a dangerous wood, you're the players are going to know they're going to fight a bunch of stuff. It's like, if they're getting bogged down by going and fighting a bunch of stuff, I'm like, well, that's what you guys are trying to do. Here's a question for you. I'm going to read it. I wrote this one out. This is a lot. This is a lot of one. And it'll kind yeah. of focus our focus our conversation. And I want to know from your uh, from yeah. your perspective because you you've you've been in uh, I think more campaigns than I have. Um, traveling in, uh, in the world can oftentimes feel boring and dull in the in the real world. Just like when you're traveling to mm-hmm. well, like I just traveled to Florida. Did I mm-hmm. did I think the flight was exciting? No. Um, mm-hmm. Just as in just as in life, a lot of the players as well as dungeon masters find that traveling ha- has a decelerating effect on the gameplay. And this deceleration leads to a loss of player engagement. Describe an experience that you have had in a Dungeon Dragon session where traveling has potentially, I don't know if this has happened in games, but has derailed or slowed down the pace. Have you experienced? Have you have you come across yep. that? Where... Absolutely, absolutely. I'll give an example where I was a DM and you were one of the players. I started to DM a session and I was having my players move from uh, where is it F- Fandelver up to Neverwinter and beyond. I was like, okay, I'll get them on this road. I'll go up there. I'll have this little cool encounter on the way, and. I was so early in my my uh, experience as a DM, and I was like, all right, I'm going to just essentially just ram this whole thing down your guy's throat. <laughs> and it felt like this is because I wanted bar, to throw this. My, my yeah. bar that no, kept getting denied. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it was, it, right. and no one's engaged and wanting to move the story along. <sighs> Well, that's because so... I was trying to force that idea of um, of like we have to do the traditional travel stuff. Being able, but to there's perceive. also an experience. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, get, but also on contrast to that, a way I loved like a longer travel that it didn't feel boring of like and still kept engagement in the um, 
in the the travel of itself is the dm we're going on a boat trip for like three months instead of doing the whole boat trip it's like okay we're gonna have those months and if you have like any specific stuff to your character we'll roll it but let's use that as downtime what do you guys want to do with three months of downtime on a boat wow like we never it's like we were always as a player i always love to have downtime because there's always something that we're doing 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 but that was a great i love that idea of yeah use travel as downtime if you're on a boat or you're on a caravan it's like yeah you're gonna have evenings you're gonna be camping early and you're gonna have plenty of time in the evening to work on something or in the cart if you're, if you're a crafter so that, or something that sort of borderlines on the on the topic also of like what what sort of counts as player engagement because mm -hmm. well not not what counts as it but it's sort of like you know if, if the players are engaged and one of them is bored or a couple of them are bored like ah oh, you know another travel or whatever um either the dm will perceive that that's mm -hmm. like, i think i think a quote good dm I don't think there really are good. I think they're DMs and then there are players. But an observant a quote, DM. A quote, yeah, an observant DM um, is one that can sort of not just not pick up, but because you don't have to sit there and try to pick up. Stare. You can yeah. you can just tell the players, if you get bored, please let me know so I can make it more exciting. Um, the most important a, a, thing in that's... any relationship, communication. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's so, yeah, I, I think that that's a that's a cool um, addition to it. It's just it's just sometimes rely on the players a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I had a I had another question for you. Um, yeah. So let's just say you were let's say you had the wrong mix of players. Let's say that you had. Our, our 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 group i think we have a, a wide range of players but i do notice that sometimes and it's very weird to me because i know i think that you guys like the combat and i, and I think you do i love sometimes, it sometimes but sometimes maybe it's just me i'm like jesus this is boring my god like i and i had i have thought about this combat for like two weeks because you know we, we play every other monday so i'm, I'm like oh this is gonna be so exciting I'm gonna, I'm gonna have them do this and then they're gonna step on that and then blah 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 and i'm sitting there i'm like my god <laughs> what have i done you know and, but i mean it, it always it always takes a left turn and, and you guys well, always say that save the day but do you ever think that like with with traveling it's a little bit it's a little bit uh it's a little loose. It's a little looser than just like a combat scenario. Do mm -hmm. you ever think that skipping traveling is a good idea? Uh, Absolutely. So I mean, if if, if, if you're if you're on agree, a like you know yeah, it, it, well, it's also understanding the story, understanding what how people are going. If you're going from city A to city B and it's a well paved road and it's guarded, they're not going to have any issues. Right. Like a, a normal merchant's gonna be able to go without but travel, no that issues. Goes, that goes back to and so life. so it. Could, but you can also, if you know that, like they don't want to just go from big city to big city because it can get boring. Then you can make it slower. But speeding speeding up the story, I don't think is ever a bad idea in a D and D game. Because right. if you've played enough campaigns, you know that the longer you play, the more stuff can slow down. How many sessions did it take us to go one day in the past? Eight sessions for our time heist. Eight yeah, sessions hilarious. for 24 hours. It can slow down. That was like... It was, so it was, speeding, up, speeding up a, a travel, speeding up the story, I, I never think it's a bad idea. And how would you do that travel, though? So it's like... Do you do you tell the players? Well, so let's just say let's, the players. Let's, are, let's, let's say the players are engaged, right? And now you're going to say, okay, we're, you're going to go. You're going to travel 200 miles. Um, okay. Do you say to them, you guys travel 200 miles? And well, it's like you're now and and and, and you, you ask them like, hey, uh, mm -hmm. and one of the things I one of the things I saw one of the rules, um, characters can travel for eight hours in a day. Uh, mm -hmm. before risking exhaustion now this is just yeah. like a general rule I don't, I don't think that many people follow it 
but um, for each additional hour of travel beyond that, each character must take or make a constitution saving throw. So for like for that type of travel, I would say, okay, Jake, or okay, Chris, or okay, Aaron, roll me, and, and now, okay, uh, Booter, uh, yeah. roll me, and Matt usually dies, so he doesn't have to win. Uh, roll me, uh, you know, a couple constitution saves, and or and or you guys all show up to the village. You guys all have you know two exhaustion or three exhaustion. I feel like that that type of rule is cool. Um, if you oh, and, and that's it, something there should be consequences well, skipping it. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's that's something that it's disgusting. It's like okay, you guys have traveled through eight hours. You want to push in risk exhaustion? You're like three hours from the town. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be a couple of rolls and you might show up a little exhausted because you've been traveling for a half a day. But other example of like you have a, a, a group that all have horses. They're going to go 100 miles on this on the main uh, transit road. And you're like, OK, you can on a horse. It's what I think 18, 20 miles a day. A horse can travel. I forget the exact number. I have no idea. Don't don't correct me. I'm not quoting a number. So let's go with twenty, just to make it simple. Um, they can travel twenty miles a day. Okay, it's gonna take you guys five days. Is there anything like? All right, we've traveled one day. You're twenty miles in. Do you guys want to sit and do watches, or do you want to just move this along and get to the town? It's gonna be like reading the room of like. <laughs> Are they are is the party RPing in a like a a five minute mile or like a five hour mile of like they're sitting and just RPing and talking and not really moving? Are they enjoying that? Then yeah, let's just fast track these five days, <laughs> and then you can pick up taking that next step, and you're having continuing that conversation in a new city. So if if everyone's like, all right, I'm finally out of the city, let's go, let's. Just get get away from the city and it's like yeah, throw make them do one watch and throw a couple uh, random encounter rolls or something else, and then say all right after this day you guys have been able to get the the rest of the way it takes four days and blah blah blah. So it's like you have a little breakup of the of there's something in between, but it doesn't have to be. Um. Okay. So. But here, let me let me let me yeah. throw one. My uh, throw one at me. Well, Chris's nice. random tip of the night. Nice. The the trick or the the way I started doing um in my uh, travel encounters is something I stole and elaborated on from um what's it called the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. So every time you travel in that session, it's like all right, roll a d twenty to find out where the dragon is and there's a, the d20 table of all the different locations and the players might meet the the dragon if they happened to roll that exact time I'm like that's a great idea so i had that's really cool. i have every i have everyone roll a d20 and then i roll as a dm a, a number of d20s equal to the number of players and if any of their dice match any of the dice that i rolled then that's an encounter. Sometimes, like during the tra during their travel, if say three people match numbers with me, I'm like, okay, that's three encounters. What could three encounters or three things happen? They could run into a merchant. They could get attacked by bandits. They could find a sign on their road or find like a a broken wagon doesn't have to be anything just could be and they all could be in one place they find a broken wagon with a merchant uh getting attacked by bandits and I, oftentimes i'll uh whoever i match it to there'll be something directed towards that character i think um i think having those rules uh set up is a very mm -hmm. i mean you have to explain you ha again you have to explain it so 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 far we have. Um, I mean, it, traveling is to me is just like. But well, I think the, traveling the way... to me, to me I, maybe people just don't like traveling because it's outside. A dungeon. I like, yeah, I I don't. I just treat I. But to me, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, if you treat the world 
as its own dungeon. Um, you're not going to have that issue, really. You, but you do have to just to sort of describe the the area. So, well, I, I guess. Um, so, okay. Well, here, here, that 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 can tie into the question I have for you. Okay. How do you incorporate lore into your travel? Hmm. That's a very describing the environment. Right. Is one so, way. So the way you incorporate lore is this. I, or at least this is the way I would do it. First off, um, is it your, if it's your own lore or you're reading, if you're creating it or you're reading it off a book or whatever you're doing, it's lore. Lore is lore. So don't be bogged down by any of that. Right? <laughs> um, That's what we're here to talk about. Let's right. talk lore. Right. I mean, let's talk it. Let's get after yeah. it, as you'd say. End quote, Chris. As I said um, twice. Yeah. <laughs> Very in a row, back to back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk. The first question is: Let's talk lore. You know. <laughs> anyway, so um, <clears throat> how do you incorporate lore? Mm -hmm. So you can. It's just the way you describe things. Honestly, it, that's just the way it is. Um, you can set up a couple encounters, and I, th I think traveling takes a little bit more, believe it or not, takes a little bit more time. And I think it might be believe It takes a little more time to set up traveling than it does necessarily a dungeon. Now, a dungeon, you have a preset map, and you have uh, traps here, there, and everything, and you already mm -hmm. have one set. Uh, the lore has already been paved in that. You know, you're you're going after this guy, or you're in this dungeon for this reason. You come out of it, and it's like you're you're traveling. Okay, where are we going, and why, and like who can we come across? And you know, every character you find has a backstory. So one of the sessions mm -hmm. earlier, which we'll reengage, uh, we'll, we will revisit um, in our one of the next um, one of the next uh, let's talk more podcast is uh like npc encounters and stuff where you know uh the players would ask where are you from like well okay now i have to create a lore drop for that so when you travel there's a lot of opportunity for world building like a lot of what in fact to me mm -hmm. that is where it's done and so every encounter that you come across has its own lore so you have to set up a little bit of lore for each encounter. And I hope we're using the word lore correctly. I think that like when we're going through the, the forest, um, and I've described the forest before, and I hope people play it. Uh, we're posting all the, actually all the encounters are posted on Instagram. So you could actually use the account to play a, a couple sessions of it. It's awesome. Um, the forest was, a, was essentially just traveling. You're in mm -hmm. the in in a forest. You're trying to get out, and it's a huge forest, and it's, it's all back to back encounters. But not all the encounters were uh, NPC combat puzzles traps. Um, for the most part, they they were just interactions and stuff. So, um, but when you do come across these things to make it a little player engagement with the traveling, you need to have a little bit of lore drops. So it's like. Do you do you have that one wall that was being held down by the by the tree ants? Like that mm -hmm. was all ad lib. Like I didn't really uh, like expect the what was going to come out of it. But the lore in traveling is important. But again, don't get overwhelmed by like the the concept of lore. Just relate the encounter of the traveling to a character or a place and people will be engaged. That's it's, 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 it's well, as simple as that. I think. Well, the reason I ask is because I feel that on a travel is one of the easiest ways to throw in those random bits of prep and information that you think is so cool into, oh, yeah. into right in, into their laps. It's oh, like, yeah. It's, they're, yeah, they're traveling and say, you want to throw something in from its own backstory. Okay. <laughs> they meet a person who's 
on the who's hunting down like their brother or something. And you you already have the whole their whole backstory because it's from the the PC's backstory. I think the dungeon master, for the most part, if he's either read the books and knows what he's what what's happening, or he's creating his own thing. I think the dungeon master knows the lore. However, yeah. However, the players don't, and they also will miss things. If a player yep. goes into a puzzle, and the puzzle's supposed to reveal where the beholder is, and the beholder's name is Ezekiel, and Ezekiel has this teleportation device to go back in time to steal the thing, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And the players decide, you know what? Fuck that puzzle. Let's go this way. Well, guess what? That's a lore drop for an NPC that you you meet up later on in, in, in the mm -hmm. game. And where yeah. are you going to do that? You're going to do that on the side of the road between A and B. You know, like yeah. that's... Yeah. It, that's how you make it. it, it, it you know, the, the, uh, traveling mm -hmm. is, a good, is a good time period to have a little follow-up or a little, you know, what do we miss? You and know, or, one or of the... Something new. One of my favorite ways of sort of guiding players is perfect for travel signposts <laughs> a physical signpost you can have signpost town that way town this way uh -uh. random tower that they've never I, heard of i beat into you the on woods. that one i beat you on that one one of one of the encounters in the artemisian forest was a shitty little puzzle and Three group members are supposed to be focusing on it, and the one person who didn't focus on it saw an arrow hit a tree with a note. That's it. That was the that was the whole thing. That was you know you you're traveling along and Chris you, sees you're calling me out an here. Arrow, yeah. You're traveling along and Chris sees a note hit a tree in it from an arrow. Go. You know. I mean. It's it's a good way, yeah. But you don't you don't want to like what's it called a uh, railroad? You don't want to force yeah. it. But it's it's a good way to like sprinkle the some of the stuff that you've that you've missed that you know is good that uh, the players might enjoy. Well, you know? how else are the players going to know about the the evil house in the woods unless you tell them there's an evil house in the woods? Right. The old man on the side of the road. That yeah Matt probably will kill. <laughs> Um, here, here's, here's, After here's Aaron Robs. So when you travel in the real world, like in our world, yeah, it's boring, as I said before. Right. But what do you do? What is it that you guys do when you travel? I mean, I'm not sitting there on the plane going like this, waiting for the DM to tell me, you know, the flight attendant oh. to tell me what's it, you know, buckle up. When you, what you, you know it's a perf you know what a perfect time to have those uh long conversations that two players really need to have at some point. Exactly. It's like, all right, you're traveling for a day. Um, is there anything anyone needs to talk about? Right. Or wants I mean, to talk there's, about. There's the, in the, the current game that I'm playing, um in my in person game, there's my character and another character have butted heads and there's some backstory rift that there we've both have been like we need to have a conversation not right now but we need to have a conversation and that's fact, the perfect time for it in fact booter uh booterbot 500 who is a new joined 5000 um, 5000 sorry well He's old. He's an he's he's from the he's, everyone he's went 500 because he's so old. Everyone, yeah, everyone <laughs> went back in time. Um and Booterbot showed up for the game and now they came back to the present. So he's old, he's old, he's old. Um but you know, he has no idea what's going on. Guess what's gonna happen when you guys travel in Trigard? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to inform him as to he's because the player's gonna want to know. And that's a good that's also a good well, uh, thing thing you brought up. Like I think players like to it, if you get them to start talking about it, mm -hmm. like that's that's engagement. That's like the pinnacle yeah. of well of, when you of finally have some time when your life isn't on the line and you're not in the 
an urgent rush to get somewhere. You can finally sit down and say, hey, so uh, I know you told me about your brother or your uh, the where you came from uh, while you're running. Finally get to understand the people you're traveling and fighting with. So here's a um, here's a tip for traveling. You have an eight by eleven piece of paper, and you're in whatever you know desert, forest, water, whatever it is. Yeah, have four of those set up, and have you know one trap, one encounter, one NPC, and then one just. As we said in our last one of one of our last sessions that we we talked about, um, sometimes during travel, not just during travel, but sometimes in the game, an encounter doesn't necessarily need to be a full on interaction with an NPC, a building, a relic, a statue. Mm -hmm. it, it could just be, you know, there's a strong breeze. You guys feel comfortable. There's an area mm -hmm. to take a nap, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, set up yeah. set up a couple of them. And, you know, you, you make your, your open world, um, you have an open world, you start here and have A, B, C, and D. And if they go this way, we'll take the next one and move it up or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Have it, have it, you don't have to have it preset is all I'm saying. And yeah. one of the, one of the things I was um, going to ask you is, and I guess this is sort of like a yes or no, um, do you think dungeon crawling only or exclusively dungeon crawling because a lot of play, a lot of people play you know a lot of one-offs where there's just one dungeon you guys are going down in the depths of hell and all that stuff um do you think that that sometimes creates a little bit of a tunnel vision with the with the dungeon master and the players where it's just like you know you okay you're in a tunnel you're in a you're in a dungeon there's a wall there's a ceiling there's a floor and there's these monsters um little tunnel vision and then because of that tunnel vision you, you spend two sessions in there sometimes maybe three or longer or whatever um trying to figure this thing out try to get out trying to feed the bad guy and you finally grab the 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 script or whatever you're looking for and you get mm -hmm. out in the open forest and boom there's no limitations it's an entire open world do you think that that transition you think it's the transition from the from the dungeon to the open world is what causes the traveling to 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 become boring because essentially what we've been talking we've been saying is it's really the same thing if you play it if you play it the way we're, we're suggesting it yeah um i think i think it's what it goes back to the first thing we talked about it's what is the purpose of the travel like if you're if you're coming out into a new space and they have no idea where anything is around them, then it's right. the purpose of the travel is trying to find, survive, find out where you are. If or did you do you, did you take a path towards that dungeon, go into it, and come right out, and you're on the the path, but still the forest around you on a trail. It's what where are you going? Do they know that's where they're the going? Objective. Is it so? Yeah, that's the it's like what's their though. goal? What's their purpose? Yeah, right. So traveling, you don't want to make it boring. I feel like having yeah, an objective is let huge. It, let it fit the purpose and let Even the players the tell you what their purpose is. Right. And, that, and that you is, guys... Yeah. The, you, if the, the players are going to travel somewhere, they have to be traveling for some reason. Or are they just wandering to wander? And that, well, then even, that's even, a reason. Here, here, here's the even better thing. Let's just say... Yeah. Um, you know, our, our homebrewed campaign, Agoth Doomhand, um, who's, who is the bad guy you guys are looking for, mm -hmm. you know, at some point there's going to be a fight there and you guys oh, yeah. are going to go somewhere. Hopefully it's the truth. We're going to die. I have no idea. There might be a TPK and you might have to restart. Whatever. Um, you guys go in there and you kill him, let's just say. And mm -hmm. it's awesome experience. I, I no longer want to be the DM. I hand it off to someone else. Um, and the way that I would handle that is, honestly, um, to have, a, have an NPC, put a note around an arrow, and shoot it at a tree. And just give the players an objective. 
for the traveling. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be the objective, but like a, just a little bit of reason yep. reason to do it, or or, or skip it, or, or skip it. Yeah. Right. If, yeah. If if the travel, if your the whole point of your travel is to get from A to B as quick as possible, and everyone is wanting to do that, like the whole party is saying, "Yes, we're really excited to be there." It's good, and you know that they get bored during some random encounters. <laughs> that's oh, what I did. You want so, you want them to get there. Oh my you god! You want that's to tell I, the story. Just that's what I did with get the, to the story. The, the last where where there was a huge war. I was like, I can, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have three. If I had you guys fight, uh, like I had thirty mind flayers fighting thirty mind flayers, you know how hard that would be. First off, I, I could do it, but it would be just like. But you'd be measuring out each individual cone for the blasts yeah. and forget everything. It. It, it would be so, so complex and take also, so long. Creating something cool like we did last time with the debates, mm -hmm. you know. Um, okay, uh, from, you know, we're going to cut the area up into three <laughs> sections. And you guys are going to debate one topic. And the topic can relate to whatever you want in the world that you're in. Um, mm -hmm. And the result of that debate is going to have an encounter that you have to, a quick encounter that you have to rectify uh, right after that debate. And then you're going to travel again for the next one. And then you're going to travel, and then yeah. and then traveling for 300 miles or whatever it was is done. Uh, mm -hmm. That's you know the, there are no rules. Maybe and maybe there are no rules for a reason. Maybe they yeah. know. Maybe they know that traveling is sort of open ended because it's so open world. And when I say open world, I'm talking you know like the video game uh, open worlds, but even more so because video games are limited. In that tunnel vision uh, type self, you know, someone someone today wrote on my uh, Instagram thing. You guys should play uh, Baldur's Gate, um, or you guys should play uh, some other some other other game. But in in there are no dungeon masters in that game. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, there there are limitations to the mm -hmm. to the world. But when you're playing open world dungeon or RPG uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, D and D style, it, 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 you shouldn't really have too many rules um, for that, unless they're home brewed rules that you guys are, you've agreed upon. Which well, uh, you you came to what I was just gonna throw in. Everything we're talking about with travel is a perfect thing, perfect conversation to have in your session zero. Of what what do you guys enjoy? doing for travel do you enjoy a random encounter do you enjoy a hex crawl because we didn't even talk about hex crawls mm, i love me a good one but it that's a great conversation how are you hex guys crawls. if that that's a whole other session okay it's a whole other to topic of conversation that's I'm hex crawls are fun hex crawls it, it's like if you're talking that slower side of D and D. Let's go slowly search this forest out. That's your your good old hex crawl. I am sure that after our next session, where we talk about hex crawls, I'm going to have you guys do a hex crawl. Oh, I am so excited! But I'm gladly going to help you set it up. I'm going to I'm going to um, set it up so that yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no. Um. But yeah, that's it's a perfect conversation for your sessions here. Find out what everyone enjoys what everyone doesn't right. enjoy what you enjoy what kind of travel that you're planning to th to put in front of the players if everyone loves keep, uh, keeping watch at night on the road and maybe meeting random people and you just want to bypass it all it's like okay that's a perfect opportunity to say maybe i throw in some extra random stuff during travel yeah I think that's I think that's a good um, a good time to uh, conclude. Well, yeah. Thank you for yeah. joining us for uh, this episode of Let's Talk Lore. Uh, the only thing left we have to do is build crazy. that NPC. Hey, can I ask you something? Can Absolutely, we you can a, always can ask we, me something. Can we build a traveler like a? Can we build some guy who travel who brings people places? Can we bring? Can we build a? Yeah. Can we build like a? 
the Let's Uber driver. We're gonna... Yeah, let's build a D and D Uber driver. Maybe his name will be Uber something or something like that. I I, I got I got it perfect for okay. you. Okay, I got All I right. got ideas. S- sit tight. We're gonna discuss a little bit and be right.